And it's for the person who means the most to me. My life is nothing compared to his. Doing this is easy if it's for him. Being sick sucks. You're in pain, you're sweaty, your speech is impaired, you're coughing up interesting things, and your nose runs like a waterfall. The only upsides are getting to slough off work or school, catching up on whatever is on the DVR, and the strange febrile dreams that entertain and or terrify what sleep you do get. And imagine, if those are the dreams you see when you've caught something you can recover from, how vivid, how surreal, how potent the dreams from a condition you don't recover from. Once a piano prodigy, celebrated composer, and legendary performance artist of the early 19th century. Now a motionless, ailing form, lying in a well-appointed bed. Behold the man, Frédéric François Chopin. A man traveling a dreamscape of his own making, contemplating the nature of reality and attempting to understand the world he lived in by way of the world he imagined. Accompanied by a JRPG-ish band of kids, disgruntled soldiers, and other unlikely heroes, they find themselves in an unspeakably lush and beautiful world, the colors only serving to hide the political intrigue and greed of the Forte Kingdom. Created by Tricrescendo, the musically-minded sister company of Triace, Eternal Sonata brings us a role-playing adventure in this most unlikely of settings. As could be expected, the gameplay itself feels very much inspired by games like the Star Ocean series and Radiata stories, but with a few significant twists. Light and shadow play important roles on the battlefield, with some foes changing forms depending on their brightness, some foes radiating light or anti-light, and all of your party's special attacks depending on their current concealment. The mechanics of battle themselves are highly mutable, starting with a slower introductory pace for the first levels, and moving up to faster, more real-time skirmishing once you're familiar with the basics. You're not roped into this progression, though, and can set the party level at whichever point you feel most comfortable. Between battles, you've got your standard RPG cruft, NPCs to interrogate, houses to loot, cinematic cutscenes to sit through, and man are there. It's no stretch to say that Eternal Sonata suffers from a bit of Xenosaga syndrome. Sometimes you'll be watching a scene and wonder why the heck the game just paused. Lo, it's because your controller is just timed out. Though lengthy, they're well-acted and filled with poignant commentary on society, culture, and human nature itself. And before you complain that it's absurd for the creations of Chopin's mind to be speaking Japanese, consider that he was born in Poland and lived primarily in Austria and France through his life, so it's equally absurd for him to be thinking in English. The more people there are, the bigger the waves can become. And as the number of people grows, the waves grow bigger and bigger. And that can lead to terrible conflicts. Which leads me to the unique element of this game. During each chapter, the action takes a break to present one of the man's compositions as performed by Stanislav Bunin. This interlude is accompanied by a series of photographs, paintings, and landscapes associated with that period in Chopin's life, as well as some historical information regarding the piece and its significance. There are lots of video games that try to make you learn, but it takes an experience like Eternal Sonata to do it well. I could try to end with a pithy comment, as is my style, but to do so would not do this truly unique piece of art justice. Instead, I leave you with the Fantasy Impromptu in C-sharp minor, Opus Posthumus 66. Yeah.